coming up in this week's episode. After 80,000 kilometres and two and a half years travelling full time around Australia, we are excited to share with you our Lessons from a Lap Year mini series. For the next three weeks, we will share all the details on the mistakes that we've made, <laughs> the mistakes that we've learned from others, and the things we would do differently. Plus, loads of great information, tips and tricks, resources, and so much more. If you are dreaming about hitting the road, planning your big lap, or already rolling around the country, this series will add value to your experience no matter what stage you are in. First up, we're discussing purchasing, planning, and preparation. Everything you need to know to get yourself road trip ready. Be sure to subscribe and join us for all of the adventure. to our Lessons from a Lap Year series, Unreal. Oh, it's so good and we are so excited to be spending the next few weeks with you. In fact, three episodes that are going to be jam-packed full of awesome information, no matter what stage you are in, whether you are still in that dreaming phase, the planning stages, how exciting is that, or actually rolling down the road. So much good information coming your way. That is so true. This will absolutely add value no matter what stage of travel you find yourself in. Mm -hmm. We have been full time on the road now for two and a half years. It's hard to believe. Not in our wildest dreams would we have ever imagined that we'd be sitting here having this conversation, sharing this info with you guys. Mm -hmm. Feel like we have. Uh, Certainly been around the block a couple of times, zigzagged <laughs> around the country, over 80,000 kilometres. And not only, I guess, have we made some mis mistakes, learnt from them, mm -hmm. we've watched other people's mistakes and learnt from them, which is a much better outcome, believe me. Uh, but we've had an incredible time. Uh, it has surpassed our expectations. We truly, as a family are better we're better mm. people we we like each other more well, i think kate likes me more which is great <laughs> most days but we're just normal and when we started out we had a pretty decent amount of debt yes uh we had a crazy dream we were so scared a mm. lot of fear we didn't know how we were going to do it but we took a step we took that first step yeah. uh we had four years in the build-up that was an incredible emotional roller coaster ride for us IVF six rounds trying to make a little miracle mm -hmm. superstar Jasper and that did impact us financially as well oh for sure but we got through it and I think the reason why we're sharing this information before we get into it is to say if we can do it you can do it a hundred percent yeah absolutely we were just normal people in normal day-to-day -day life busy doing what yep. we did yep. and we took a leap and <laughs> looking back on it now it's so achievable and that's really what we want to share with you totally if we could do it yeah so can you you've no, got this no silver spoon no golden goose mm -mm. unfortunately no <laughs> <laughs> but no. it is achievable it is really you know it comes down to that you don't need to see the whole staircase just take that first step yep. and that's what we're going to talk to you about today. Awesome. Now actually all of the information that we are going to talk about over these next three episodes we have compiled into a fantastic ebook. That Kate says we and she actually <laughs> means me. Yeah. Yes. 
you will be able to download, purchase that from our website. It will be a low cost ebook. Mm -hmm. That's a way of us being able to add value to you. We'll have everything in there so that you don't have to take notes as you're watching these episodes on mm -hmm. YouTube. It's also an awesome way for you guys to be able to support us, help us stay on the road, keep creating this awesome content. Awesome. Of course, you can access this information for free through our YouTube episodes yeah. as well. So you can rewatch them at any time. Isn't that amazing about YouTube? They're yes. there forever. So anytime you need to reference this information, you can do it that way. Yeah, and again, uh, if you didn't want to purchase the ebook, the podcast would be another great way to get this information yeah. for free as well. Family Travel Podcast, every directory around the world for free. Awesome. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, help us out, support us, and we'll keep bringing you this content. Good deal. I love it. All right, here we go. Let's do it. Let's get into it. Um, we've broken it into, I guess, three subcategories. The mm -hmm. information as we started to just, you know. Purge. Yeah, and, and recognize <laughs> the scope of what we had to share. Mm. We thought, let's just, you know, break, break this Break it down. down, chunk it, because there are different stages and there are so many so many things mm -hmm. and we know from meeting other travelers on the road or the questions and comments that come in through our social media or on YouTube through email there are so many questions and so many things and from our own experience we had so many questions and doubts and how do we do this and we hadn't times. even thought about things mm -hmm. so we just spewed it all out put it <laughs> down on paper on the iPad and have categorized it our first one, planning, preparing, purchasing, Excellent. everything to do about getting you road trip ready. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're actually going to start this one with a quote. This, we feel, absolutely sums up this episode. Our famous author, uh, he's probably most famously known for The Alchemist, if you've read that. If you haven't, get a copy of mm. that. Paulo Coelho. Hope I've said your name right there, mate. Uh, here it is. If you're brave enough to say goodbye, life will reward you with a new hello. Super cool. It is so good. Okay. <laughs> Our top tips for purchasing a new or used rig, RV, mm -hmm. van, pop top, trailer, you name it. Let's get into it. Oh, look, it can be so overwhelming and we know this from our own personal experience. There are over a hundred manufacturers of caravans wow. alone in Australia. So knowing which way to go and, and which manufacturer to go with and, and what type of traveller you are, there are so many things that you need to think about here. We have some good tips that will hopefully help you. Bigger is not always better. There you go. We've learned that through our own personal experience as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think society just thinks the grander something is, the better it is. That's not always the case with traveling. I thought that we needed it all before we went. I thought, you know, we need a new vehicle, uh, new tow vehicle, new van, new all gear, the gear, all the gear. Really, from our experience, definitely not the case. You'd be better, uh, you know, there's an evolution of camping. Yes. It starts with the guy with the swag and then he's in a tent, then he's in a pop top, a caravan and then a motorhome and it's yeah. kind of like that evolution of life. And look, we've met so many people on the road who have said to us, that was us. We yeah. started in tents and now here we are in our motorhome traveling Australia. I think the best advice that we could give you after our two and a half years on the road, when you are deciding what way you want to go and what vehicle mm -hmm. you want to be traveling in is really think about who you are as a person. And if you're struggling between something like a motorhome or a caravan, we've actually got a great episode on that caravan versus motorhome talking yes. about the pros and cons of each, because we have had time in both styles of vehicle. Mm -hmm. Think about your absolute must haves. What are the things that you're not going to negotiate on? For me, it was having a full bathroom. I didn't want an all in one. Think about those things that you're willing to negotiate on. Mm -hmm. And then those things that don't really matter and just make lists, go to the caravan shows, Excellent. get inside different vehicles you know, touch, open drawers, lay on the bed, put yourself inside these vehicles so that you can get a real feel for, okay, is this actually going to work? Ask 
loads of questions. Yeah, look, that, we've said this before, the only stupid question is the one that you don't ask. Mm -hmm. And I think to the point it is that it is better to make a start now. You know, you, totally. Yeah, just just get started. Get your. That is such a good point. There is no perfect vehicle. No. There never will be. And if you keep putting it off, waiting for that perfect scenario, then you may not ever take the leap and travel. So do mm -hmm. what you can now. Start small. Get on the road. We found through travelling that we have realised what type of travellers we are, what are the things that we love, what are the things that we thought we needed that we actually don't need at all. Yeah. You evolve. So just do what you can. There's a really great uh, point that we make in the caravan versus motorhome. Are you more about the journey or more mm. about the destination? Or if you're a mix of both. Yeah. So some good info in that. Absolutely. All right, check that link out. The other great advice that we know now that we didn't know is that you can get a pre-vehicle mm. uh, inspection, pre-purchase, and get a vehicle inspection through NRMA. Mm -hmm. There's probably other businesses out there as well, but that's what I found in the research of this. It's like only $255. That's cool, for members, right? That's right. Um, look, if, if you're spending anything from $20,000 to $200,000 mm. on your home on wheels, 250 bucks isn't bad, is it? No, to have that peace of mind. And again, we've yep. met so many different travellers on the road who have purchased, mm -hmm. you know, used vehicles, whether that's a, a caravan or a tow vehicle, and then just had a, a long list of issues mm. that probably could have been prevented with something like that. Yeah, because you're not an expert, but there are experts well, out there that can help you. Yeah, well, we're not experts anyway. No, that's right. <laughs> All right, once you have purchased, mm -hmm. Film your handover. Oh my gosh. Now, even if it's just little one, two minute grabs of each part of the van, mm -hmm. this will save you some headaches. We have helped more people with awnings and issues with awnings yeah. than anything else. And that was because we filmed our handover completely. It was like a good couple of hours, but yes. going back, time coding it, and then being able to say, oh, that's how the awning goes. The awning was the major thing for us. I mean, yeah. we were total newbies, you know. We'd never, we didn't even know what an awning was We'd before we bought our caravan. That's Ex it. Yes. Yeah. And we referred to that video footage, I kid you not, probably a dozen oh, times yeah. in those first weeks, months, when we were like, how do we put this thing away again? How do we get it out? So having that was mm. a saviour. We could have found ourselves in a really terrible situation. <laughs> but because of that, Obviously now, you know, we just do it and we don't even think about it. But we're able to also, as you said, help others film it. It is it is so good. You will honestly thank us. We once helped a guy in Budgiewoy, Central Coast, New South Wales. Yeah. And there was a big argument going on with mm. him and his missus. And I said, okay, I've got to go give this guy a hand. Anyway, I said to him, pull your phone out and got him to film me doing his awning so that... <laughs> He would stop yelling at his wife. Oh, and he was so thankful for it. And yeah. look, the situations that are stressful or the ones where you feel like, oh, God, other people are watching or I'm going to be embarrassed about this are the situations that are going to cause angst between you yeah. and your partner. So if you can alleviate that and videoing a handover is a perfect way, that would be our number one tip. You want to like each other. Yes. Okay. More often than not. <laughs> One more tip, when you're at that expo, the first day we went, we got back to our hotel because we were staying because we wanted to see as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And we were both like, what What just happened? Do you remember which one had that? Which one had the, was it a combo bathroom? No, we don't want to look at that. So the next day we went in and we took photos of everything mm -hmm. or little videos again. Your phone is, is honestly the best tool in, yeah. in your purchasing process and it will save you. Will save your remember. head exploding yeah, yeah. if you're trying to narrow down to a particular manufacturer or a particular make and model. Okay, here we go. Tips for planning. Okay, you've purchased, you're doing this thing, whether it's, all right, we're setting off indefinitely or we've given ourselves 12 months or we're going for school holidays. It doesn't matter. You're getting out there and that is awesome. Mm. And planning is such a big thing and we get loads of questions around this like well, how do you guys do this what resources do you use what do you have to take into account 
honestly, a lot of it, I think, when you're thinking about your actual hitting the road, mm -hmm. that's the easy part. Yeah. The step before that, the getting to that place, that's where you really want to be focusing so much of your time and energy. I mean, we spent two years planning for our full-time travels. A lot of that was because we needed to get rid of our debt. You know, we, we yep. couldn't actually afford to do it. We didn't have a house to sell. Yep. We were, you know, yeah, in a bit of financial pain. So mm. that was a main part of us having a two year plan, but mm -hmm. we set a date mm -hmm. and we stuck to it. We reverse engineered that end date, the, the rolling down the driveway date mm -hmm. with a van and a, a four wheel drive that mm -hmm. we uh, didn't own either. Yep. It's quite amazing, but at least then we had a step that we knew we could take each day by going from the end date back. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure you guys watching have heard this story before, but we literally did go and buy a massive whiteboard, mm -hmm. stuck it in front of our TV. We turned off the news. We turned off anything that... Made us feel crappy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we put all of our focus into our new goal, our dream, mm -hmm. and we reverse engineered it and we marked off those action items and we ticked off the weeks as we counted down. Do you know what that did for us? That kept our fires burning. It kept us inspired and motivated. And we Great. weren't taking huge steps every single day. We were taking small bite-sized actions. Great point. A lot of those small steps was binge watching yes. <laughs> other families on YouTube. Mm -hmm. In particular, specifically, it was keep your daydream. We'll talk about these guys as much as possible to everyone. Yep. They are amazing. They're an American family. It wasn't for us about knowing where we were going to travel in Australia. We knew we were going to do that. Mm -hmm. But watching a Somebody family else do that, it. Yeah. And we thought, wow, if they can do it, we can do it. Totally. You know? So that was what inspired us. Find R and D doll. R and D. <laughs> You're hysterical. Yes. So binge watch us. Um, okay. And it's free. I mean, you know, amazing. Isn't yeah. this world Gotta amazing? Love YouTube. All right. Uh, look, we were saying about turning off your TV. Unless you are watching us on YouTube, turn your TV off. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We've said that. There we go. Going to go down okay, to Okay, stop spending. spending. Yes. This is a massive it's one. It's massive. Especially if you've got debt, and I think all of us have got some sort of baggage that we'd rather leave behind before we hit the road, <laughs> especially if you are thinking of a long term or a longer trip. You don't want to be taking that with you. So. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of debt to pay off as four years of IVF added up. We joked that Jasper was our mortgage because we didn't have a house to sell. We stopped spending and this is a hard one, but I tell you what, get in the mindset of already living on the road Great. in your van, yeah. in your 17 square meters, more or less. Mm -hmm. You don't want to spend you will quickly realize how little you need. You'll become a conscious consumer. You'll really think about those purchasing choices. In fact- So good, wasn't it? That interview we did- um, With Cherie Everett and thank Spider. You. Yes, and she said, oh gosh, you know what we did? We would be getting to say Kmart or Target at the checkout. You know, they have those little $20 figurines and they're right at your kid's eyesight. Mm -hmm. And one of the kids would pull it off and go, come on, mom. And you're a sucker at that point because mm -hmm. you're just trying to get out of the shops. And she would look and think, hang on, that's a night camping. Totally. And on the other end, it's probably going to end up as landfill. So yeah. it was a very easy choice when she knew that that's what they were going to do. Absolutely. Great. And off the back of that, another really good point is you don't need it all and you can't take it all. Mm -hmm. So stop spending, think about what you're going to have with you when you hit the road. Yeah. I think another part of this planning is to find your tribe. Okay. It mm -hmm. does not matter whether you're a couple, a family, a solo travel, single white female, gay, straight, bi. Honestly, you could punch you into, mm -hmm. into the World Wide Web or uh, Facebook is a great one, a group that suits your tribe mm -hmm. and you will be They're amazed. There. Yeah, there are camping groups for everyone that will share information freely, help you out, 
give you these sort of ideas. Mm -hmm. it, it's an incredible community. Oh, it so is. And particularly yeah. on the solo traveller side, we've met women, we've met men who are solo travellers and they'll have meetups with solo, other solo yeah. travellers. There is a massive network out there and you know how much we love the community. It is awesome and mm -hmm. open armed welcoming. All right, budget is a huge one. We have been asked many times mm -hmm. to share our budget and we have seen this online many times and then seen what happens. People then argue over someone else's version. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's travel on your terms. Your budget totally. is totally your budget. Yeah. Look, to be 100% honest, we didn't watch any YouTube videos in relation to how much does it cost to travel Australia before yeah. we set off, specifically because we knew, well, we're going to be traveling differently to anybody else out there because we're in, we're different. We're individuals. Mm. We all travel differently. We have different vehicles. We have different desires. Different dietary needs. Oh, totally. Our best advice different is alcohol consumption. <laughs> don't get caught up in the, it cost us yeah. this amount to travel Australia. Figure out your budget. What do you currently spend per week on all of those things? Yeah. I just saw a really great thread on one of the camping forums. Yes. Again, great, great to find those groups. That was talking about fuel. Oh, I think we're going to put our trip off because fuel is so expensive now. And one of the responses from a guy said, hang on a second, just set your budget. Set your budget at, say, $250, $300 a week, whatever it is, $100 a week, whatever your budget is for fuel, and then just travel that far. It is brilliant I, I advice. That's so true. It is so easy to find another excuse or reason. There will always be fuel hikes. There will always be global issues. Mm -hmm. uh, Interest I mean, rate. I mean, there's always a reason something. not to travel. Don't look for that. But our best advice mm. is uh, the budget template that we used yeah. prior to even having this crazy idea to travel Australia and now while we're on the road is an Australian government smart money um, budget template. It's fantastic. We'll Free. put the link in the description of this video. It'll also be in the resources section of our ebook. We would just recommend mm. make your budget for you. And based on what you're doing now too, like... Have a look at what you're doing living mm -hmm. in a four walls yep. and then go from there. Yep. That's just a great starting point. Yep. And just stick to that and you'll adjust it as you're on the road, mm -hmm. but don't get caught up in what anybody what else is doing. What the Joneses are doing. All right. In planning, have your bucket list items. Oh. Look, particularly around peak season, things just go up mm -hmm. and, you know, everything's by supply and demand these days. The price points change. But have your couple of bucket list items each or, you know, and for the kids as well, if you are going to be doing a lap year or even if you're going to do three months, a month, whatever it is, get those sorted first. What are the, the dreams? What mm -hmm. are the big ones? Make your list, yeah. write it down, and then all of your planning will fall in and around that. But don't miss those things. This is your this is your opportunity. You may not get back there. So if you've always wanted to swim with the whale sharks Look, in WA, put it on the list and make that happen. That, that's a perfect example. We would love to swim with the whale sharks in WA. We just said, yeah, yeah, we'll do it when we get there. Now, we didn't actually make a clear point of understanding what that was. One, you have to book well in advance. Mm. Two, you can't go in October because that's when we got there. I was like, well, where are the whale sharks? Get them back. I'm here. Uh, so, yeah, so know, know what it is. If it really is a bucket list item, then yeah. make sure you check it out properly so that when you arrive, the bucket list is there, the item's there. Yeah, and it also helps mm. with your budget planning as well. Okay, fantastic. Checklists. Now, we're going to quickly talk about checklists. Mm -hmm. We will make sure that our checklists are all in the ebook as well. Yeah, so absolutely. You'll be able Particularly to through that. Checklists are so important, especially when you're new or setting off in a new vehicle. Mm -hmm. We were total newbies, so we had yeah. no idea. And we referred to physical checklists for probably. I laminated them. <laughs> 
and and had backup copies in the van mm -hmm. in case it rained because I didn't want it to run. Yeah. And look, honestly, we would have used those for easily the first six months of our travels where we physically went through, okay, first step, reverse in, tick. Second step, handbrake on, tick. You know, and we used them and they were amazing resources. Yeah. The hitching and unhitching of a caravan is the most crucial safety time. This is where if something's going to go wrong, yeah this is when it's going to happen so you want to make sure that you're not distracted and you want to make sure that you're following those steps in the right order of course we don't use our physical checklists anymore they're ingrained in our brain but they're really important to have so we will include those in the ebooks i think that's it the, the time that um your neighbor's really going to want to have a chat to you at a campsite is when you're hitching up to go. Yeah, no kidding. It happens all the time. <laughs> we, we even recently in Tassie had a guy come over and he goes, oh, I know that you say that, you know, this is the one time you don't want people to talk to you. And here I, just, I am. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say hi. We were laughing about it. I said, no, you're fine, mate. It's all good, you know. Um, but it, it is the time, even when you know it that well, that you, you could miss something. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Super, super important checklist. Checklist. Okay, do a towing course and... On this as well, if you're a novice like we mm. were, do a four-wheel drive yeah. course as well, which we didn't do. No. In hindsight, it's one of the things that we would add to the list of mm -hmm. wish we had done that. Mm. Um, we can still do one. Yeah. Look, well, fortunately, we did a, a like a, um, it was like a tag along to mm. operate, but we actually went with the four-wheel drive owned by the company and the driver, Tony, and he did some sand driving and talked us through the instruction that he does. So mm. now, after I did that, we did that, I felt, well, we can... Yeah, we've got this, we can do this. Do this anywhere. Yeah. yeah. And same with the towing course. Half-day course, every capital city, you know, even around the East Coast, there's, there would have to be a dozen different towing education courses. Mm. Just do it. Yeah, and look, especially for the partners or the ladies who... <laughs> won't necessarily be doing a lot of the driving or the towing knowing what to do in an emergency situation if your husband breaks his ankle and can't drive twice is yeah. really important because things do happen we have met people particularly in remote areas yeah. where something has happened to the husband and the but wife he, has had he, to take over the reins he had a heart attack and he had to be airlifted out by mm. um RFDS, yeah. Royal Flying Doctor Service. And then she had to tow the van back down to Adelaide like 18 hours away or something. Yeah. And I mean, just it would be horrible. It's, it's all, all about reducing stress. the stress. Exactly. Yeah. So again, anything you can do to boost your confidence, increase your knowledge, reduce that stress, totally worth it. Okay, in the planning, we, we are planners. Uh, <laughs> can you tell? Can you find a balance though between flexibility and being that planned yes you yes you can yeah. you definitely need to and again this comes down to not wanting to bypass places that are amazing but you can't stop because we've got a booking and we have to get to at the next caravan park mm. it really is about finding a balance and this did take us a little while we are planners we were very planned when we first hit the road yeah Something I would do differently is relax that a lot if we had our time again. And of course, we're much more relaxed now. Mm. You'll get to somewhere and you will be like, this is amazing. We are staying longer. Yeah. You don't want to not be able to do that because you've got a forward booking. In On the flip side of that, though, there are certainly places mm. that you will need to book if you want to go there because they're super popular. They only have a limited amount of sites. So it is about finding that balance to be able to really enjoy the best of what this yeah. country has we to offer. We experienced that, I think, in Coral Bay. Yes. Where we had our bookings, uh, meetings in Perth. We had to keep going yeah. and oh, that would have to be one of the most stunning places we have ever been. Yeah. We rolled in, had lunch. And I cried as we had to drive out. Yeah, after and we could have spent two weeks there easily. Easily, yeah, stunning. So, yeah. you know, we're still making that mistake, but anyway. 
We'll go back, John. <laughs> we will. Uh, yeah, spontaneity. It is one of life's best gifts. I'd written that in there. Yeah. Okay, weigh everything before you pack the van. Don't fill the cupboards just because they are there. The storage available in caravans particularly is a trap. Yeah, this is such a good tip and mm. one that I wish we'd known <laughs> before we set off and hit the road. Yeah. Actually, a good friend of ours, Roz, her and her family are expert caravanners. They still, every time they go away, bag up everything they are putting into the van and weigh it before it goes in yep. so that they have a gauge of their overall weight. It is such a good tip. And that's right. There are so many cupboards, particularly in these new caravans these days. Don't fall into the trap of feeling like just because you've got a cupboard, you need to put something in it. We still have so many cupboards mm. in our van that are empty and that would be our best advice to you. Don't cram it in. Perfect, all right. Test out living off grid before you go. And we mean in your front yard. Oh, totally. And yeah. again, I wish that somebody had said this to us before we hit the road. Mm -hmm. This is such a fantastic idea. Unplug from everything, fill your water tanks, get a gauge. How many days are you going to get out of those fresh water tanks living as you would if you were somewhere remote or in an off-grid campground? How many days is it going to take before you need to find somewhere to dump your toilet cassette? Do you need a second cassette? Are you a large family? We have friends who travel with us second cassette and that is again such a brilliant idea. Get a gauge for how you can live off grid. How does your solar work? How much power can you generate? How long can the kids go without a shower? <laughs> Baby wipes, that's another <laughs> good tip. Or camp by the beach. Look, interestingly, in a lot of these vans, those pumps will pump out about 11 litres per minute. Mm. Amazing. It goes pretty quick. Yeah, it sure does. So if mm -hmm. you've got the opportunity to give it a little test drive in the safety of your driveway before you go, that's a great idea. Okay, another bit of a space and weight saver is converting everything to digital before you go, oh. including mail, correspondence, DVDs, get a little flash drive. Yeah. Yeah. It is such an excellent idea. We get lots of questions about mail and it's so easy these days yeah. to get the majority of your mail into email. That means, you know, again, you're saving space. You're also saving the planet. Yay for the trees. We get parcels. Every single month we travel on the road, we get a parcel sent to us. And Australia Post, get yourself an account. You can send to just about anywhere in mm -hmm. Australia. We have been in some of the most random and remote places and had our monthly doTERRA orders delivered to us. It is super easy, so don't worry about your mail. And a great tip is having those movies on a USB, mm. especially if you're somewhere where you don't have any service and the kids wanna watch a movie, or if you have a few days of pretty miserable weather and you're looking for things to keep you occupied in the van. Yeah, there's only so many times you can watch the same Paw Patrol <laughs> yes. DVD. <laughs> Yes, trust yeah. as we know. Yeah, I tell you. Okay, <laughs> communications. Now, we will be covering off everything to do with safety around communications. Mm -hmm. um, I've just received my Starlink. Thank you, Elon. I watching. can't wait to test drive Let's it. Let's open it. Let's open it. Oh, no. <laughs> Look, we can't wait to actually give it a really good what? run over the next Starlink. probably two months. Mm. And then I'll do a pro proper review and tell you that hopefully it works. If it doesn't. It's been an expensive mistake, that one. But uh, yeah. anyway, fingers crossed, I'll let you know how that goes. Mm, and we will be doing safety and security in our next episode Great. for this series, touching on everything, including communications. All right, but on this one, we wanted to talk about is creating, in your planning, creating a communication emergency phone number list, an emergency numbers list, including, mm. you know, next of kin, your parents' numbers, rallies, whatever it is, those people that you need to uh, be able to contact in a case of an emergency, mm -hmm. um, even your Medicare numbers, insurance policy numbers, just put it onto one list, again, laminate it, stick it in the, the glove box, lock mm. it, put it in the van. And the reason is, is because, you know, in a panic situation or a, a situation where there is an emergency and you've 
phone is flat. Oh, perfect example. I mean, who knows these days the phone numbers of all of your contacts? I know we That's certainly right. don't. So yeah. if your phone is out of action, at least you've got that list. It's a really good tip. Okay, uh, grab bag. We're going to talk oh. about that. We will. We will go next into week. detail okay. in our safety and security on a grab bag. This next one is excellent and it is something that we actually did. Before we rolled into our very first campground, we had... Google earthed and found a sports ground that was empty on a Sunday or whatever it was and drove over there, put our witches hats out, practiced our reverse yes. towing, reversing, parking, everything that you could imagine. Kate took it, we took it in turns and we yeah. did that, you know, for a good hour and 15 minutes, I think it was, before we got around to the caravan park. I didn't want to be the afternoon entertainment. I didn't want to be embarrassed probably. Mm. And I, was, I still had that anxious level of fear about towing such a big van. Oh, totally. So great, great tip. Yeah, and it doesn't just have to be when you first set off as a newbie either. I mean, any mm. opportunity that you've got for your partner who maybe doesn't great tow advice. as great much advice, yeah. to get behind the wheel in a safe space where there's not a lot of people watching on would be a really good idea. I'll tell you something really funny to end that story is that then we pulled into Rivershore on, on the sunny coast, Maroochee, Do Maroochee River, I think, and this guy, Steve, rocked up to the window and then literally backed the van in from the window. <laughs> All that practice and we didn't need to do it. Oh, God. But you're amazing now and that's because you practice, 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 yeah. practice. That's exactly right. Okay. Plan ahead for school holidays, long weekends, oh. peak seasons. Uh, these can bite the budget and hurt. Oh, definitely. And we've been caught out with this. And, mm -hmm. and of course, different states have school holidays at different times as well. Particularly if you're a full-timer on the road or you're in the midst of a 12-month lap, you are going to be faced with these times of year where it's busy, prices go up. Where of the mind of... If you can find somewhere, we like to bunk in at a family and friends, you know, park the, the van on the front Across lawn. lawn. Yeah. You know, we've even stopped in at um, a number of our beautiful audience members who've said to us, hey, look, we've got five acres, come and park your van Amazing, up. thank you. It's been so much nicer for us because this is what we do, this is our life, than being somewhere where it is super busy in those holiday periods. Mm. And we also think it's quite nice. There are so many families around this country who don't get the opportunity to get out with their kids mm -hmm. and have a holiday like this outside of the school holiday peak seasons. And you're taking up their space basically. Exactly. So our tip yeah. would be go west. You know, not only is life peaceful there, did you like that? Go, go west. west, life is peaceful like what you there. Do. No, it's going to be a lot quieter if you do go west or find a nice patch of land or a free camp to ride out those school holidays. Okay, here we go. Lucky last in the planning, Wiki Camps is our number one best $7 or whatever it was that we have ever spent. To be able to download the maps. You want to make yep. sure that you've got something, an app, maps that you can use offline because let's face it, there are still loads of places around the country that you are not going to have cell service, internet service. Mm -hmm. So having that there on your phone as that safety net is a great tip. And I mean, like how cheap are apps? It's ridiculous for that amount of information that you get. All right, wrapping it up now, storage tips and hacks. We're gonna read straight down these. Again, these will all be in the ebook as well. Every single bit of information. We use the washing machine as our dirty hamper. Yeah, it is such yeah. a good little tip. Why have another container that your dirty washing goes in when your washing machine is empty? until you fill it with that dirty washing. Perfect. Heavier items, tin food, your water, get it down low, get it, if possible, over the axle mm -hmm. or axles of your van. Yep. Tr don't put it towards the back of the van or to the very front either, because that can certainly affect your tow ball weight or the towing line. Mm -hmm. So try and get the weight down low over the axles. Great tip. Also easier to, to pick up than to have to move around. 
use non-slip matting in all drawers and cupboards. Great advice. Yeah, I love this. And it's so cheap. You can pick it up from the cheap shop. They come in big rolls. We use it in every cupboard and every drawer. Not only is it going to help keep your items, your glasses, you know, your, your dinner plates in place, mm -hmm. but it also keeps things a lot cleaner. You're not going to be getting dirty marks that you're going to have yep. to continuously wipe out. Perfect. All right. Soft so storage tubs versus hard storage tubs. Yep. We use both. Exactly. I love a good storage container. Not only does it help organise things, it also helps fit more things into some of the weird spaces that you have in your caravan cupboards. So we mm. use soft tubs for clothing. We use harder tubs for items that, you know, need to be standing up in the bathroom is a great example with toiletries. There are so many different options. Yeah. We'll show you a few, hopefully, in overlay. It is amazing how much less you need than what you think you need once you've been on the road. Mm -hmm. Less stuff equals less stress. It is so true. In fact, yeah. I know because it happens on a bit of a cycle, I'll just start to feel this stress inside and I'll look around at the caravan and I'll say to Paul, we've got too much stuff. We have to clear it out. I'll kick the boys out for a day and go through every single cupboard and we'll do a great op shop run, gift some things back and then it feels so much mm. better and just reduces that clutter and that stress. Perfect. Okay, MSA storage pouches. We actually got some that were more specific for the vehicle. Yes. But we stuck them in the van. Awesome. Yeah. All your remotes, the torch. Exactly. I'll put an overlay there so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, really handy. And there are a number of different um, brands. I know Drop Bear Storage is another great Aussie company where you get to try those pouches. But great for things that just need a home. Magazines, yeah. paperwork. Very cool. Command hooks, Katie's favourite item. Yeah, I do love a good sticky hook. What's even better is that they're not going to leave a mark on your caravan walls. Yeah. There are some great suction hooks that you can get as well. And of course, you can pick these things up from places like Bunnings. Mm -hmm. We've got suction containers in our bathroom. I'll tell you what, this is a perfect example of you get what you pay for. Yes, indeed. It mm. is so true. And we are big believers of paying once and maybe a little bit more for a high quality item than having to pay over and over again for cheaper items that don't last. Okay, velvet coat hangers, that's obvious. They're really thin. They are particularly in Paul's wardrobe. We use them for his beautiful shirts and they just Thanks, save so much space. Hanging fruit bowl. I love my hanging so fruit good. bowl. This was from Mindel Markets in Darwin. I it was like $12. Know. I know, I love it. Mm. And in fact, I wouldn't mind getting a few more little hanging bowls for different things, but especially if you've got kids and you want that to be accessible for them so they can help themselves to a piece of fruit when they're hungry, yeah. a hanging fruit bowl is great. And it also takes that bulky fruit bowl off the bench space. It's awesome. Yeah. It's like being on a boat. It just sort of swings. Yeah, with I love the it. And we leave it up. Yeah. Awning hooks. I did a, a review on that product just the other week. I'll overlay there so you can check that out. Go to our gear page. Again, another fantastic product with dual uses. <laughs> so good. You know, for hanging anything or you get somewhere, you're only doing it overnight. You don't want to put a clothesline up. Chuck a couple of those in. Hang your washing. Awesome. Okay, rubbish bag on door latch, latch outside. Again, I'll just do an overlay so you can see what I'm talking about. But this is a great way, particularly we eat a lot of fish, so you know it can be a bit stinky inside the van. So it's a great way to find a point just to hang it that on a, an existing mm. latch. And it also gets it off the ground where you know those sort of critters can't get it because you'll see it, you'll get to campsites and people have left their rubbish bag outside and it's just everywhere. everywhere. All right. Okay, quick update. Everything will be available in our ebook. So we will be releasing that very soon. Watch this space, we'll let you know exactly when that happens. Again, I'll have all the links, checklist templates, as resources. much as we can jam in there for you that yeah. is going to be useful, add value to your experience, it will be in there. Okay. Everything that we wished that we had our hands on before we hit the road. That was the problem. 
we would have to look at 20 different points of reference. Mm. Yeah, so we just thought, let's just put it in one place. Yep. We wish we had that. Okay, Channel 31, we want to say thank you to Channel 31 down there in Victoria, airing our episodes every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. Great guns, absolutely getting a great following down there. Thank you to Victoria. And it is also free. It's a yes. free community television network. So good. And look, if you're yeah. not in Victoria, Melbourne and Geelong, you can still live stream it online if you want to, and that is yeah. any of their programming. So if you need a bit of a midweek feel-good fix, awesome. Fantastic. And we're on season three there. So yeah, pretty so amazing. Uh, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. There you go. If you haven't already. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Go for it. Do it. Thank you, yeah, all your support. Next week we're talking safety, security, gear must have items, and also what you don't need. Oh yeah, that's a big <laughs> one. Stay tuned for that. We've learnt plenty through our own mistakes of what you don't need. <sighs> okay, two more of these episodes. Following next week's, the really big one. Yep, our top tips. The number one z lessons that we have learnt not only on our mm. lap around in this last 12 months, but in our entire two and a half years on the road. Every piece of knowledge, information, advice that we could think of to share with you that yep. is going to absolutely add benefit. Including about 15 things that we... Would do differently. We would do differently. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's a big one. Yeah. Excellent, thank you so much for watching. Amazing. All right, we'll leave it there for now. Look after yourself. Look after your family. And happy trails. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe, and share our channel. And if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles, and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family, and happy trails.